What up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the New Gen Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me as always is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, it's funny how you and I have conversations from all the way back and say things like, does Kevin have too much on his plate? Yeah, it was like two years ago. We, were, we had a whole show about this. It's amazing how these things just come up, right? When I read that quote of, is Kevin spread too thin? I immediately like just went back into my archives of when we spoke about it, but let's go back to the beginning. Brian, when this was first announced, when Blade was first announced, according to Kevin Feige, correct me if I'm wrong. I don't know if you know the story more, uh, better than I do, but from what I remember, it was a phone call that Mahershala Ali made to Kevin Feige. Feige picked up the phone. Mahershala Ali said, Blade. Kevin Feige said, let's do it. The next thing you know, Mahershala Ali is on stage looking quite Like he, he, like he didn't belong almost. And as time went by, I'm pretty sure everybody was asking about what's going on with Blade, what's going on with Blade. Finally, we get some info. Found the writer, they found the director. So, and then you get uh, Mahershala Ali making a, a voice appearance in The Eternals. A few things, the conversations that I had, I was getting a few things about what's, where they were going with this. Uh, they were going back to uh, Blade's origin. They were going back in time to like 1914, 20, I forget. But they were going back to the origin story uh, uh, from the comics. And uh, so things are coming along and now we hear this, Brian. Mahershala Ali is unhappy with the, the script. Based on what I've heard, Kevin Foggy wasn't too happy with um, the script, so was, so was um, uh, Mahershala Ali. They didn't like what, what was being done there. And I I'll get into a little bit more detail, Brian, but what are your thoughts on this uh, not totally shocking, uh, a, a, a new piece of news that we've just gotten regarding Blake. So also not to bury the lead here, but they lost the director's gone. Yes. So you're supposed to shoot in November and the director left this week. So that doesn't happen unless there's a real problem yeah and like the official word was schedule bs yeah. bs no director leaves a film that close to the start of a shoot unless it's a creative problem now whether he quit or he was canned that's for you to decide but to make a change this late in the game indicates there's a real issue. There was a real issue that got out of hand and couldn't be repaired. Yeah, when you're when you leave at this late of a, uh, this late in the game and then getting a but getting a gig in the MCU was not something that you uh leave over scheduling conflicts. If I was hired to do a movie from MCU Brian, my calendar is free. Well, especially if you're a small time, especially if your resume is, I've done a couple small films. Right? His his last film was an indie film starring Riz Ahmed that did less than a million dollars at box office. Like, this is the golden ticket. Yeah, I know. If, like, right? Like, yeah, but... not everyone becomes. Yeah. Hey, like not everyone becomes the Russos off it, but you're gonna have a career. Like, you're gonna be working. Mm -hmm. You're gonna get gigs for ten years. You're going to get a lot of looks and a chance to fail mm -hmm. if you direct a Marvel movie that does reasonably well. So, yeah, red flags all around. 
Brian, when you hear the word spread too, spread too thin, what I immediately thought or was thinking when I heard about that, when I heard that quote, I said to myself, Kevin Feige, you and I, Brian, can agree that he really hasn't been that hands-on on some of the films that he's made. He's been letting directors do their thing. Perhaps... What's the name of the uh, the the director that left? Um, I think it's, is it? Hang on, it's mm -hmm. Tariq is his last name. I think it's Bassam Tariq. Okay, yes, Bassam Tariq. Yes, that's his full name. I think, based on the conversations that I've had, and I'm trying to be careful. Um. Kevin Feige had say in this movie, but it's quite possible that what he had to say regarding this movie in terms of what he wanted to see wasn't being addressed in the script. Because to be that this close to filming and, and still being iffy on the script, Brian, is a problem. Are people not taking Kevin Feige seriously with regards to the things that he has to say or his opinions for these films and, and directors, because he's been giving a little bit more freedom to directors, directors are taking a little bit more leeway into making the final say. I mean, what are your, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah. So I think let's rewind the clock. You, you took us back to the, to how this movie came to be. I think that's important because as I recall, and I may not have this exactly right, but that was one of the first times where we saw the MCU under the Marvel Studios umbrella basically commit to a project solely based on its lead actor. People can go back to the research and correct me if I'm wrong, but I think I'm pretty right in the sense of if you think about Iron Man, if you think about Cap, you think about Thor, you think about Black Panther, you think about Guardians, you think about all the things that led up to Endgame. Most of those were conceived as an idea first, like here's the story arc or an origin we want to tell, the direct, you know, and then the star was hired to fit the idea and the vision that the director and writers already had. What you're describing is what's becoming a little in, and we've flagged this in the credit scenes, what is becoming a little too commonplace now where Marvel, because they have access, because they're a big deal now. And I they are need jumping that bag. And, they're signing the name before they have the story that really fits the people they've got, Harry Styles, Charlize Theron, and Mahersha Ali is kind of one of the first people where that happened, as far as we know. Yeah. Because like, even when like Josh Brolin gets Thanos, it's like they knew that they, they knew what Thanos was supposed to be. They found someone to voice and mocap it. It wasn't like they, Josh Brolin called him up and was like, I hey, be Thanos. I can do Infinity. No, it didn't work that way. So this was kind of the moment, I think, where it sort of pivoted toward a different model. And this movie took ever to get going do you i mean you got to remember how like there were no updates they didn't find a director they didn't find Tariq for a long time and the word was like they heard all sorts of pitches that they didn't like all sorts of things they didn't like and then they settle on this guy and they had the the writer is from watchman it's uh stacy osay kaufman i think <laughs> is her name um and so you know a, a, an acclaimed writer doing it but like it, it never felt like they had a plan before they got down the path with this and i don't think that, like so the script is a different issue like marvel has often had scripts that have changed on the fly like for a blockbuster movie like i actually highly recommend um it's not marvel i actually highly recommend if, if you guys want to listen to a little bit about how a movie a blockbuster gets made Go to the Light the Fuse podcast, which is a Mission Impossible podcast, and find their interview with Christopher McQuarrie, and he will tell you how they make those movies, which are fantastic. Yeah. But he will tell you they basically have no script. 
when they go to shoot it. It's literally written and backfilling the action they know they want to use. It's crazy. It, you, it doesn't make any sense that it would work, let alone sound as good as it does. But I just the script alone doesn't alarm me as much as whatever happened with the director. The only piece of the script then that alarmed me was the action thing. The idea that like you could have a Blade movie with two set pieces kind of tells me you don't necessarily understand what a Blade movie is about. That's a, that scenario that you you you're referring to is similar to uh, that 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 Netflix show, uh, the movies that made us, and they talked about Die Hard and how that one was made, uh, which was like on the fly and was we need we need the script it, it was on the fly yeah. dudes were just writing it as they went along, yeah. it's crazy, um, but um. I don't foresee, I can see, I could, listen, if you're Kevin Feige, Brian, and, and you're Kevin Feige, you take the, and, and Mahershala Ali calls you, and he says, I want to do Blade. It's hard for you to say, I'll think about it. You're probably going to say yes, Brian, in this situation, because that's, that's a, that's a good cast right there. So I, I'm not saying, yeah, I'm not saying he's wrong to say yes. I'm simply pointing out that the model is different. Yeah. So it was as we talked about, there's nothing wrong with trying new things. Some of those will not work, but I, I do wonder if there has been a fundamental issue or disagreement about as they've gone along, well, there clearly is, how they want the MCU blade to be portrayed, right? It's like Mahershala is a great enough actor that you could, he could do it any number of ways. Yeah. But as we all know, none of these projects is truly independent of the greater picture. So whatever choices they're making have to feed back in a good way to where Blade is going to slot into future team ups, bigger projects, Black Knight. It has to work. Yeah. So there is that. You can't just go off on your own and be like, hey, here's my blade thing and you you figure it. Like it never works that yeah, way. Yeah. Do you think there's a chance when Herschel Ali gets fed up and, and says, like, yo, we I can't do this? No, I don't think so. But I think we have You think he I don't I think we have maybe he has two ask. I think we have to wait till Wakanda forever comes out. If the one, I don't think if what comes forever is not good, Brian, which I doubt it won't be. Hence, it, it, but if it's dope, if we if we believe it's going to be dope, Mahershala Ali will stick it out because he has to ride that momentum. If you're his team, you're thinking about that. You got to ride but, that momentum. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Let's let's not overcomplicate this. Yeah. Like this is a guy who has two Academy Awards, but you do you do the you know. You do these movies so you can do the other movies for life. Like he's probably not winning an Academy Award playing Blade, right? This is the if we were to do the gen the gentlemanly version of Yahya Abdul Mateen's clown work quote, this is it, right? This is a two time Academy Award winner who loves this character, who wants to have fun playing this character, and is going to use his immense acting talent to do this character, but also knowing that like if he hits. He's going to make so much money doing this that he can do as much indie Stuff awards you know. fair as he possibly wants. Do whatever he wants. That's what this is about. Yeah, that's what this is about. And we get it. Yeah. But I also trust him that, like, he's not going to mail it in. Like, he did, you know, whether or not you loved Cottonmouth, he didn't mail that performance he in. He made that show. Yeah. Yeah. Because after he was exactly. gone, that, that <laughs> joint fell apart. Yeah. Exactly. So, it, it, I, you can tell when somebody like will just take a check and show up versus somebody who's like, if I'm doing this, I'm going to do it right. Now, I think what the, the obvious question here is what happens to this project? It clearly is going to get delayed. It was supposed to come out, right? Like it was supposed to be like you're shooting in November. It was supposed to come out either like late 23, like fourth quarter of 2023, I think is when it was supposed to, there's no chance. That that yeah. Happened. And this movie can't, it, it, it can't fail. Because God forbid this movie fails, 
Wesley Snipes' name is going to pop up again. <laughs> you know, people are going to be like, especially Wesley Snipes, whom I think was probably led astray into thinking that he was going to be prized his role. But, uh, hey, I hope, uh, Brian, who do you hope can, would, would take, can take over the mantle if, um, I mean, well, they, they need to find another director. Who would you think would be a, a good director? My choice in Fuqua would be dope. And they need a big director. They don't need no no-name director. So that's a great call, actually. Antoine Fuqua doing a, I mean, by the way, who, who I, I really enjoy the Equalizer franchise. Oh, yeah, I like it, too. Obviously, obviously, like obviously, training day was great, but yeah, no, that's a that's. I think he's too big, though. See, I I don't think exactly. I think the problem with an eighth inning exit is you're not going to get the kind of guy you're talking about or or woman that you're talking about to take the reins because this script is going to get scrapped. Yeah, like it may be the same writer, but whoever comes in is like there's two ways this goes. Either if they were happy with what they had. They could try to find someone to just like, hey, um, take this and run with it. Make sure it looks good. They're clearly not happy with what they have. So I think this thing is going back to the drawing board, which means it's a mess for whoever comes in. And like, you know, we've had director changes before, but the, like, let's go through them, right? So Patty Jenkins gets dropped. Now, nobody's been dropped this close to a shoot. Yeah. But Patty Jenkins gets dropped from Thor 2. You know, we kind of know what happened with that. Alan Taylor comes in and Dark World is V, yeah. right? Um, Edgar Wright will never see his version of Ant-Man, but he he left pretty early in the process. Peyton Reed comes in, did a nice job, but it was a very different film than I think what Edgar Wright wanted to tell, which he kind of let you know later. Derrickson. Um, and then Derrickson leaves and we get Sam Raimi and we kind of get two movies in one and you could kind of feel the me you could kind of feel the mess in Doc Strange too. So that's what I mean by like, and Raimi, I think Raimi did it in part because of the Spider-Man linkage. There's a Feige linkage. There's a little bit of like personal thing there that like he's a bigger name than usual to do that, but he did it because of that relationship. I don't think you're getting that here. Um, so I, 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 you know, I've heard people throwing all sorts of names around. I'm like, yeah, they're not coming. Like, you know, someone's like Jordan Peele. He's not coming. Yes. Like, don't even, don't even start with that. Antoine Peele. Like, you're not getting those guys. They're not coming in to do it. I did think of a possibility, which would which would be ironic. Tyler Perry. No, that would be <laughs> funny, but no. Like, oh, yeah, speaking of that, speaking of Tyler Perry, I heard that like someone threw Spike Lee's name. I'm like, they not directed no Blade. <laughs> we're gonna get the same. <laughs> we're gonna get this, Brian. <laughs> so, but I did, I did, I did oh, come snap. up with. It. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I did come up with an idea. A deal in Bilal. The directors who lost, who didn't get to have Batgirl, but who did, but who did part of Miss Marvel. So they've already done MCU. God knows they're available right now. They did Bad Boys for Life, so they can do action. I don't think, and by the way, I don't think this is a nothing on this. I do think they probably want a director with some representation. Like, I, that'd be their preference. I think they're sitting there. And I think it might work in the sense that they at least know the machine. So they could probably step in and it wouldn't be foreign to them to get involved with this. That's my, that's my, like, what makes sense and is feasible. That'd be my wild prediction or guess as to what they might do. But... Either way, this thing's getting pushed. Like they're not shooting in November. If they think they're going to shoot in November, then I'm just like, our expectations of this film are going way down. Before we sign off, your thoughts on Kevin Feige moving forward with projects, and what? And I, and I have to make mention BlackRock on the on a, uh, made a comment um, saying that uh he's one of the our subscribers he comments on uh, he makes a lot of good points he said do you, do you think it's time for kevin Feige to, to, to have a second in command there like official because it seems like it's only him obviously we know it's not there's the parliament and stuff 
But yeah, let's talk about that. So, so what what are your thoughts on? Do you think Kevin Feige needs a second guy to handle the TV aspect of it? I guess. Well, yeah. So let, in theory, they have those people, but I think what we're kind of finding out is like Kevin Feige's the Bill Belichick of the superhero genre. Like, name me the Bill Belichick coordinator that ever went on to do anything as a head coach. You can't because it hasn't happened. So, you know, Brad Winderbarm's running the TV side, you know, you've got the parliament, but we're kind of seeing that there's only one Kevin Feige. And I think the real villain in this, which again, you and I, I feel like you and I are on this island and like no one else is talking about this. The real, the real villain in this is Disney. Call it for what it is. Yeah, yeah. The reason he's stretched too thin is because the Star Wars house is not fully in order. And Disney's like, we got we to gotta just ride this Marvel horse until it drops dead on the track. That's the real problem, people. Like the common denominator to your VFX problems, to your storytelling problems, to your production problems, is that Disney wants more. They don't want better. And at the end of the day, Kevin's got a boss. Man, we've heard he's, had, he's been at odds with Chapek. You don't think this is one of the things that he's been talking about? Like, He's like, yeah, I bought my $58 million house this year, but like, it ain't worth it if I can't actually do what I enjoy and actually have my nose and my ear to the ground on the stories we're trying to tell. So like, call the spade a spade. Like, that's the real elephant in the room is like, what I'm hoping, and I'll bring a lot of things in here, the luster is kind of off streaming, right? We've kind of seen like, this whole view from the pandemic that streaming is going to conquer the world and you should just spend as much pos as possible on content. That's over. That's over. Like, I mean, I can show you Netflix's stock. I can show you Warner brothers stock, like all these companies that went after that at like the gold, at the, the golden pot at the end of the rainbow, their stocks have been annihilated. So like to me, Disney's obsession with its subscriber numbers, that has to change because that's not the be all end all of this game anymore. And I think the sooner that happens, the better off we're all going to be on the Marvel side, because that's going to relieve the pressure of how many shows and how many films Kevin Feige is supposed to shepherd in any given year. Because we're finding out it is too much. It's not too much to make money, but it's too much to deliver the consistency we were seeing in phase three in particular. That should kind of tell you that's about the limit. Like that's about the limit of what they can do. So short answer is, yeah, Kevin Feige needs more good people around him, but you know, we shouldn't be surprised that like he's a one of one. I mean, this whole universe has been a one of one. So the real issue is there's too, Disney is asking too much of the MCU because the rest of the mouse house is not good enough right now. Yeah, I mean, hope, I mean, we do have a great beginnings and hopefully they see, and we'll get into that a little bit later, on another show. Um, yeah, but it's still a mess over there yeah, overall. Yeah. They got no films. They got zero films on that entire side of the house. Yeah, 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 yeah. For a franchise that's a billion dollar lock every time they go to the theater. That's ridiculous. That's the real issue. And I, I, I said this on a previous pod. I think the production calendar is going to get reduced. I, I told you that. with this. I said they're going to cut the number of shows they do, ultimately, yeah. the number of films. It's too many. Yeah. And I think I, this, this just underscores to me why that needs to happen sooner and not live. Like, you look at that calendar where, like, phase five, we said it, this stuff's going to get delayed. Yeah. It should get delayed. Yeah. They should not be trying to do 12 things in like two years. Yeah, right? yeah. Like, just put it in perspective. They went from Iron Man 1 to Endgame over from 2008 to 2019. They're trying to go from where we are today to Secret Wars in three years. Yeah. It's insane. Like it's I know. I mean, there are a lot of good things to look forward to, but you sort of worry as to the amount and the quality, what it will be yeah. when you when when you start seeing those things that just makes you go crazy. And uh, I don't know. Very interesting, concerning situation for Blade uh, and for the rest of the MCU.
Um, this is and this is not anything that we this is not nothing that we've been talking about, Brian. We've been talking about we've had our concerns about Kevin. Yeah. Obviously, again, two years ago, we talked about Kevin being spread too thin. Um, and the amount of work that they've been putting out, we've always like this is dope, but that's a lot. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The 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 titles would were, 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 the titles were dope. Except for she hoped, but the titles were dope. And but we also had our concerns. So. And now all that stuff is finally manifesting and uh, hopefully they can catch it because listen, as, as much as we want the superhero genre to last forever, at least until I'm done and over with, this will end when we get a string of horribleness. Yeah, there's no question. I mean, like you, you right now, if we were, if we adjust for China not releasing these movies anymore, they're basically plateauing. Like if you just kind of stack the box office, it's you know it's plateauing. Like Thor, Thor four versus Thor three, X China's about the same. But if you have another year of Thor four, Doc Strange two, Eternals level stuff, that is going to take a step down. It, it will. That's what will happen, and that will continue until the quality changes. Um, and I think the thing that you, you've alluded to many times, which is 100% right, is, you know, like we all want every one of these things to be classics. And in fairness, that wasn't the case even at, from the beginning, right? It's, it's been uneven if we're being objective. But it's one thing if you kind of misstep with a Doc Strange sequel. It's another if you blow Fantastic Four or you blow X Men, you or you blow Secret Wars. You don't get that back. It's over after that. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> it's over after that. That's why I'm like, yo. That's why I keep telling you, Brian. Fantastic Four cannot fail. The mutants? Are you kidding me? You know how long have we been asking for the mutants to go back to the MCU? We wouldn't want the MCU to have all its characters back. Now they have them. We expect what, Brian? Perfection. I'm expecting yeah. perfection. I'm expecting yeah. to be blown out of my mind. Yeah. It, with the, I mean, yeah, with the, with the Mutants franchise, you expect somewhere in there, you expect some Academy Award nomination. You expect some performance where, we, where you're just like, that's it. That's a wrap. <laughs> Don't even bother trying to do that character again. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, um, yeah. 